Dee, 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 dee. Hello to all the hair besties in the land. I'm here with Hannah. Hi. Yet again, you kind of had a little hair affair. Because you're a model, so you book gigs yes, for I a hair model. I too. I've never let anyone touch my hair. Kind of like a brassy <laughs> yeah, blonde. Brassy. But that's okay. Yes. That's why you're here today. Mm -hmm. You mentioned to me you don't like your hair to be too light and too ashy, correct? Yeah, it, wipe, it washes my face and my skin. You know what's really funny? Because most people want like, to be as blonde as possible. Yeah. Well, actually, you're the one that told me that I should never do cool tones or go super light. You guys, take a look at her skin tone. Not everybody needs to be ashy platinum blonde. Some people need to be golden. So our goal is to have her kind of like a golden-ish blonde. I'm going to aim for like the Naked Glow collection, but I'm going to work with it and see what we can do. And you're open to anything, right? Of course. You promise? Yes. You're not going to get mad at me? No. You ready to get um, this paranormal hair activity situation corrected? Yes, 100%. Let's go. Come on. Come on. I actually kind of like this color on you, to be honest. So I think that maybe we should work around having our usual rosy tone on you, but kind of supplement what's going on here. Hannah is a natural level six. Uh, it's slightly kind of warmer. So we're gonna work with the story. So let's head over to the color bar. All right, guys, so today we're gonna use Stroke 7 to balayage Hannah's hair. I love using Stroke 7 by itself to create a natural sun kiss look. But on Hannah, I'm gonna try to lift it furthermore. So I'm gonna add Big 9 Hybrid to the mixture. And make sure you go in with thick activator. <laughs> thick. <laughs> I like to mix one to three ratio. Sectioning the hair is very important for this technique. I call this technique the stardust technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide out the quadrants here, section it out, and go deep when you're doing the zigzag pattern. Start here. We're going to go down really deep. Go up, down, up and down. And this is the top section. Underneath that section, you want to go parallel to that. The zigzag pattern literally matches up. All right, so we're going to do four clips. So now we know that each side will have four clips. On this side of Hannah's head, she actually seemed to have a little bit more hair than this side. And that's normal. Everybody has a slight asymmetry. So sometimes you might have to do four clips on this side, and sometimes you might have to do five clips on the right side of the head. All right, so make sure you pick up your Guy Tang My Dandy balayage paddle here. I am going to pick up a good amount of product inside that reservoir. Always make sure to just swipe on the board so you have minimal product. I'm literally going inside that ridge. That's why this section is so important. To be able to go internally, you're able to go inside those hills peaks and valleys to create dimension internally. You could see how I didn't touch that wall. Let's say you want to hit both sides. I literally lay the paddle down. I'm just stroking the surface on top and underneath with the paddle. So what's cool is that having it pre-sectioned already, you're able to drop the next clip. If you want this top section to really pop, you can paint underneath too if you want to, because I like the dimension. I don't want to over lift her hair. What I'm gonna do is over direct the hair down slightly, and I could choose to go up to that point if I want to, or drag it down slightly lower. Always start in the mid section because you don't want too much product on the top of the routage, and then work that product up. Less is more. When you go too heavy handed, it will just look too forced. Your body positioning is key. So notice that when I'm on the right side of Hannah's head, I'm standing on her right side. When now I'm on her left side, I have to stand on her left side because I have to over direct the hair all the way to the left side, right? Okay, so Hannah has a couple short pieces on this side. It's from extensions, clip-in extensions. What's important is that we don't highlight the little short pieces, because if we highlight the short pieces, we draw attention to the breakage. I'm just gonna paint on the opposite side. Sometimes when you're, when you're stuck in the same position, you can actually injure yourself. So actually shifting your body position, it's almost like stretching and exercising your body in a different way. Well, what I have discovered to make it easier sometimes, I could dig in here and I see three ridges, right? Sometimes I, I'll do one ridge, so I could have my elbows down, paint this ridge, and then go in and hold the next ridge paint on this and then hold the next ridge up and paint on that and then bring it all together and paint down. So you see the internal ridges. So now the key is to pull with lots of tension. So I'm bringing all three ridges down to a flat panel. Panel the ends and paint down. So we're interconnecting the three ridges into one and feathering on. Look at that. 
boom. So now that I'm on the front of Hannah's hair, I want to turn her to the side here so you guys get to see the situation. So I can choose to highlight the ridges from the front, meaning I could go one, and two. So the highlights would frame the face so when she pulls it back you see the highlights. But when she wears her hair down, okay, so now if I over direct it to the front, if I paint the back of the ridge, the hair around her face remains dark. So I have to decide here, should I do her from the front or should I do her from the back? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm not gonna highlight under here, right? I'm gonna highlight on the surface. I want the dark to be underneath and the highlight to sit on top of it. So there's an outline of depth here. So the same concept goes with the hair around the face. I'm gonna sculpt you. I'm gonna over direct everything forward and paint everything towards her face. All right, so once we get to the fringe or her bangs, it's pretty thick, you can see here. So our goal is not to highlight the bottom side because we want that outline, remember? So let's start at the top of this point, deep zigzags. Underneath the zigzag, there is point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. So we are not gonna highlight this first section. So we're gonna drop this first panel and we're gonna paint right on that. So as you can see, I'm painting on the right side of the panel on the first section. So when I get up to the next section, I paint on the left side. All right, you guys, we have processed our hair for 45 minutes. <laughs> It's a look. That's yeah, a look. It's a look. I just want to show you guys the elastic shell technology. So I always hold up the hair erection and you can see how I could twist it. It doesn't crack even with the hybrid. Literally just swing your hair around. Just swing it. That's not a swing. Swing it. Whee! <laughs> We're back. As you guys can see, Hannah's hair has been lifted. She's no longer dark in yes. the fringe area. So much brighter. There is some remnants of her past color there, which I'm gonna work with it. And she actually doesn't mind warm tones and she loves it. We're gonna embrace yeah. it. But we are gonna put Amber Rose on your hair. Are you okay with that? Yes, of course. I always end up being pink every time I come here. So we're gonna mix a full tube of Amber Rose. I'm gonna add a little bit of dusty lavender permanent to this formula. I'm gonna use six volume. Because six volume doesn't accelerate the lift, it's slightly more muted at the scalp. Now I'm gonna use Amber Rose. The third formula, guys, I'm actually gonna create a hybrid situation. I'm not gonna use the permanent to lift and then deposit on her ends. I'm gonna use it to primarily deposit and I wanna shear out the tone. I'm actually gonna mix in crystal clear to the Amber Rose formula for the third formulation. Because I want primarily deposit and we're using permanent color to do this, but I don't want to overly shift the base. I am adding Olaplex number one into each formula. I am gonna lift that base because I know naturally warmth will pop out of the hair when permanent color is deposited. It's gonna merge that into those highlights. The reality is some people need warmth. We're always trying to control and neutralize, but sometimes what we need to do is enhance what's already there. Anytime you would look up pictures of people with blonde hair, or anyone you would like see on social media with blonde hair has that like platinum, like icy white, or it's just really cool. It doesn't look right. You look sick with it, yeah. right? Formula two, apply. So in this case, I want to merge her natural into her highlights because she already has that copper tone that's existing there from her previous modeling gig that she had that they applied the copper tone on top. I decided why fight it? I wanna work with it. So using permanent color, I feel safe. So now I'm gonna switch over to the comb brush hybrid. It's just gonna help me swipe from left to right and it's ergonomic so it doesn't hurt my wrist. And we are gonna go in with the third formula and this one contains crystal clear just for the ends. This is gonna make sure that the ends are gonna be nice and bright and not go too dark because of the porosity in her hair. Look at Mimi, she's hungry. Hi Mimi. She's like, feed me. I wanna ask how you feel about my shirt. It says, girl, she thick. I'm totally all for the thick movement. I personally love it and thick girls are absolutely beautiful. I'm not super thin, but as someone, like, as someone thinner, like, cause so many people are like body shaming because- They're, they're body thinner. shaming you for being thinner? Yeah, I mean, there's skinny shaming, there's fat shaming, there's like shaming on everything. Most people on social media on a large percentage are so young. And that's when you're kind of like, you know, going through puberty and like growing up and you're seeing all these girls with these so-called perfect bodies. And like, if you don't have that body growing up, like, you know, seeing things on social media, like has made me at times feel insecure about my body. We're talking about social media bullying. And a lot of times, 
sometimes like on my YouTube comments and my past videos, I'll read the comments. And people will make fun of my chest because my chest is so big. I can't help it that my chest is big. People, yeah, you have great pecs. People will say, oh, he has muscle implants and all these things. And that's fine if that's what you think. But I do work out seven days a week. Yeah. And you can tell you have like a really nice, like more muscular physique. People discredit you now. Now people don't want to believe that you work hard mm. for it. They want to say, oh, you had surgery or implants. Instead of judging people, we should embrace all types of people because I do have clients and you've seen them. They have surgery to have like really large breasts mm -hmm. or really tiny waist and that's them and I embrace them. Yeah, who is anyone to shame anyone for their body? So many people nowadays feel like they need surgery and they don't want it themselves, they do it to please others. And that's when I think it's not right because then you'll regret it because if you're not doing it for yourself and it's not something you genuinely want, it's not worth it. I know if I were to ever, let's say I had my chest done, I wouldn't do it for me. Like I personally am confident in who I am. It would be because of people constantly telling me that I have a small chest. So you got bullied for having smaller chests. Yeah, and it's always from other women, which is like, Hard. I mean, like men have said stuff too, but it's like mostly other women hating. So you can't please anyone. So, so bottom line is embrace everyone, whether they had something done or not. Embrace yeah. all types of people, but most importantly, do everything for you. Yeah. <laughs> now keep in mind that when the hair is damp, it's gonna appear a lot darker. So don't judge it. So I'm gonna pump out my Confidant Color Securing Shampoo. It smells so good. But with this, it feels clean for a long time, and it also gives the hair a lot of volume. So after I rinse out the shampoo, I'm gonna gonna spray the My Hero Collagen Repair on her hair. This really makes her hair feel soft on contact. It closes the pH to the hair. You know, over 30% of our body is made out of collagen. Yeah. I love my Confident Conditioner. It really moisturizes your hair. You can use more moisture, yeah. girl. done with Hannah's hair and I'm obsessed with it. How do you feel? It looks so good. Out of all the pinks, I think this is my favorite. I like it too because it's on the warmer side yeah. of all the rose tones that we've done. It looks so good with your it skin so tone. Good. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Next time we're gonna go golden blonde. Yeah. And no more cheating on me, right? Never. Subscribe, thumbs up, leave comments below. Hit that bell. Bye guys. <laughs>